Hello, and welcome to Small Business Spotlight. I'm your host, Austin Harrell, and I'm a retail leasing specialist in Los Angeles and Ventura counties. In this series, we highlight local small businesses in the retail and restaurant sector and share their stories, insight, and challenges in today's ever-changing landscape. You may be wondering, what specific challenges are small businesses facing and what are they doing to adapt? We will answer this question and you will get tangible and tactical tools to implement in life and in business. As a small business owner myself, I see firsthand the challenges we face in today's economy. I have made it my personal mission to partner with small business owners and entrepreneurs and ask powerful questions, share amazing stories, and equip business owners like you with the tools and resources to be successful in today's business environment. Thank you, Austin, for having me. I'm very excited to be here. Is there any stories, any businesses that you can think back on of success, of innovations, of maybe a business model that you, you know, giving advice to maybe that small business owner, that entrepreneur watching now, what, what would you tell them or what sort of strategies might, might they think about? So in today's world of business, what's missing is service. Service has gone by the wayside. The entrepreneurs and the small businesses who put an emphasis on knowing their customer. I, I, I eat out a lot. Our family eats out a lot. Where do we go? We go to the local restaurants that when we walk in, they go, Beth, Alex, Mario, how are you? They know me. Yeah. Or the waiter walks up and says, you want that Corona with the lime tonight? Like, they, so I find that the most successful small businesses are the ones that pay a little bit extra for staff, pay a little bit extra for technology, and really spend time in the store getting to know their repeat customers. Because those repeat customers spend more and share the stories more. Uh, right. if you if you polled people today on social media and say, where do you find, you know, the next thing you want to buy? You know, if you want to buy a new laptop, if you want to find a dog trainer, if you want to find a bike for your seven-year-old, where do you find the recommendation? It's on social media. So meaning references from people that you know Go, and testimonials go such a long way. And I find that my tenants who spend time on knowing who their customers are, win, and then create an, an experience for those customers. So for example, I have uh, a tenant called Canesware and they sell University of Miami apparel and gifts and and the campus is 30 miles away from my shopping center. So it's a phenomenal destination tenant. And sure. Brett, owner, prides himself. And I've been in the store where I've seen 10 people come in one after another after another. And he knows their name. Like wow. here. Everyone knows your name. And then he listens to his customers and has coaches and players come in for signings. During COVID, when he couldn't do that, he became the ESPN of South Florida. I called him up. I said, you need to become the ESPN of South Florida, kind of like what we're doing with our small business series interviews. Sure. I said, so all of this access to these players and coaches and people in the business, the college presidents, you know, the athletic directors, the sports agents, everyone's talking about college football. And everyone is in need of, of sports. And, and they're also, they're also, they also sell heat basketball, Florida Panther hockey, the new soccer team, the new soccer team that was just being formed and started when COVID hit. I said, you need to have a show in your store where you're talking about what's going on in the sports 
field or this, you know, in the sports industry and the sports news and bring people on as guests. So while you're shut down, while the government has shut you down, you become, you remain top of mind for your customers and you give them something for them to remember you while they're stuck at home. They then did alumni updates. So they were like, did an alumni spotlight. So yeah. they were able to pivot and start spotlighting University of Miami success stories, which was great too. And wow. they did it yeah. in the store, this beautiful store behind them that's closed. But the, the and they, you know, they have a mailing list of like 3,000 people. So whether you're, maybe if you're a bike store and the bike store is closed, they could do things like they could talk about the best bike paths in the city, or they could talk about here's a quick and easy way to fix a tire, or yeah. they could do something about how do you pick the right helmet. So yeah. I think education on just like what we're doing or Instagram Live or Facebook Live, it's not hard to communicate with your customers and provide value beyond selling them something. It's very interesting. I don't know if you know this, but um, you know um, Michelin? Yeah, yeah, tires. Michelin, so there's, so you, you know Michelin tires, right? Mm -hmm. And you know the Michelin star food. If you are a top, if you're a top restaurant or even hotel, you get Michelin stars. Okay, yes, I know what you're talking about now, yeah. So Michelin tires, is the same Michelin five-star food. Think, it doesn't have to even be what you do. Right, right, true, that's true. You can yep. spot something in a whole other industry. It's just being creative. You know, we, um, I heard of a restaurant in Chicago that when they, this was, a, this was I think a Michelin five-star restaurant and they shut them down. Mm. Government shut them down. They were not even allowed partial occupancy. And they said, and they had all this food, all these like filet mignon, like lobsters, like all of, so they put together bo meal boxes and they said, come get a hundred dollar meal for four for your family. And in the box was a gift certificate for a hundred dollars for a meal when they reopened. Love it. So Love it. the meals for free, they were going to throw away the food. So True. the meal, True. right? The meals for free because when they reopen, when people might be afraid to go back, they're sitting there with that gift card saying, I'm going to go to that restaurant. I'm always thinking like right now, I believe in our um, industry, the victim, one of the victims, are, the winners are going to be health. Everyone's going to healthier and do more things to be healthy. So I don't think the gym are going to be, I, I don't think the gym is industry is going to have, is be, going to be the victim. I think hair salons are going to be victims. Mm -hmm. Hair salons I see in my portfolio are the ones that are hurting the most. So this week I called my three hair salons and I said, you know what? It's back to school. This is what we're going to do. I'm going to give you each a thousand dollars. And what I want you to do is I want you to pick five teachers a week to offer a $50 service, you know, sure. maybe like you're going online, the parents are watching you, you know, do sure. something with your kids, nominate sure. teachers. And you can do five teachers for four weeks, $50 a service, and you'll get a, th I'll, I'll give you the thousand dollars as the landlord, and we can get press saying the landlord's teaming up with the hair salons to help the teachers. Wow. and. And of the 20 new teachers that walk in your door over the next four weeks, maybe you get five new clients. Yeah. Who knows? Absolutely. So, you know, it's, it's, it's cheap money to invest in your tenants where they can then invest in the community. And then the long-term goal is to get exposure. You do something nice. We get some publicity and you help out the teachers and maybe you get some new clients and it drives traffic. Absolutely. Absolutely. I love that. What do you think is on the horizon in, in our uh, sector, maybe late 2020 into 2021? Any advice, anything you see? What, what does the crystal ball say? Well, <laughs> I, 
here, but um, I'll say here are, here are a few things I think. I think that of the, you know, 30% of our mall of malls closed, I think 40% of those closed malls will never reopen. So if you're in leasing, you need to go target those tenants because they have locations and they need to go somewhere. If yeah. you're those tenants in those malls, call the neighboring leasing agents and go relocate your stores. Yeah. I think that downtowns that don't have residential, I don't foresee office, the office population coming back possibly until next summer. So if there's a way to get out of your leases and you're in downtowns without residential. So there are downtowns that have enough residential to keep you afloat. But, if you, but there are many downtowns that have no residential and they have no population, they should start looking in the, to suburbia for additional locations. So those are kind of two bummers, like the, sat, like the depressing news. The, the uplifting news is I think Christmas is going to be off the charts. I think that we have a world of people that have not spent money on gas, back to school clothing, summer camps, Disney trips, travel, um, vacations, Easter brunches, back to school clothes, uh, work clothes, uh, uh, back to school supplies. I mean, it goes on and on what people have not spent money on that they traditionally would have. Right. So, and they have not been able to celebrate. They did not have Easter brunch. They did not have their 4th of July parties. They will not have Halloween and Thanksgiving will probably be limited. I think after the election, I think things are going to settle down and I think Christmas is going to be through the charts. I think people are going to decorate their houses like they've never done before. And I think kids, I think parents are going to have guilt like no other. And all that money that has not been spent is going to be spent on toys and gifts for their, for, for everyone in the family. Mm, And so if you are a, a small business or local business, independent business, and you can bring, if, if, you know, like bikes, I, the problem is, is the shipping, right, and, and getting some of this merchandise. But if there's anything that you can um, flip the switch, so like I just did a deal with a guy who sells pool tables, pinball machines, hot tubs, and grills. And I said, you got to be putting in all of your ads, you know, dad's Christmas presents, right? Yeah. And yeah. that pinball machines, kids Christmas presents, and just double down on getting the word out that you are the place to shop for Christmas. Any last bits of wisdom or anything? Well, you know, I love helping people that take action, Austin. <laughs> and you are one of those guys. I think you jumped on this series idea when it was in its, in its infancy, right? And you've kept it going because you've seen that we've had other friends of ours that have tried it and kind of dropped it when they got busy. You know, it's great for the the independent entrepreneur and small business industry. It's great for us. It's great for the communities. I think it's a win, win, win all around. So I commend you for continuing it. And I'm urging you on to keep going. I just did my 20th one last week. I absolutely took a little pause as we got ramped up and started getting busy, but I'm back and scheduling them now more than ever. And it's, it's a service that we can provide, a value add that we can provide. You know, I, I have put in my vacancy windows, shop local, love local, I have on bus benches that I rent in front of my shopping centers, shop local, love local. So wow. we need to help these local businesses because um, it seems like there's not many people doing that. So it's, if it's got to be us, let it be us. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, thank you so much, Beth. Very honored to have you on the show and uh, look forward to talking soon and um, more, more to come. And, I think more, more positive stories. I think all good stuff. Thanks so. for having me, Austin. Absolutely. Thank you, Beth. Talk to you soon. Have a great weekend. You too. Bye-bye.